The new national curriculum, the programme of study for science, has three clear aims. The first is about developing science knowledge and conceptual understanding, the key foundational ideas that underpin all of the science that children will go on to do later on. It's about developing an understanding of the nature and processes of science, so the, the, the scientific methodology, the idea that, that science is about asking questions, looking for evidence to answer those questions, and that those questions are about the world around them. That's core through there, the, the methodology. And the other aim is for children to understand the uses and implications of science. And I think what, what lies behind that aim is a, is, a, is a need for every child to be scientifically literate, to be able to make sense of how science fits into their world and will impact on decisions they make as they grow older, whether or not they become scientists. There are some changes within the curriculum. Some are to do with sort of where content is, so things have been moved around a bit. Quite a lot of the physics that was in Key Stage 1, like light and sound, electricity, forces, has been moved into Key Stage 2, but the ideas are, are there still. The, um, there's some additions at Key Stage 2. Evolution has come in at Year 6. Um, digestive system, which wasn't there before. So there's some sort of content change. I think what the key change is that's really significant is that, well, there's two changes. One is working scientifically, whereas before we had a strand of science inquiry and it was assessed separately and teachers sort of, science inquiry became a bit of a separate thing. Now it's very clearly that working scientifically, as it's now called, is the way by which children will engage with and learn their science. So working scientifically has a much broader um, explanation of what it's involves it's not fair testing for example fair testing is part of it but where you have now working scientifically really addresses how children will learn science and make sure that they are very clear about that methodology the other thing that's changed is i think it's a bit harder there's quite a lot in there that's that is a bit more challenging in terms of the scientific terminology that's used. We're expecting children to have m uh, more knowledge of names of things, of from animals and plants through to classification criteria. The technical vocabulary used in all of the areas is slightly more challenging, I think. The other thing that I'm very excited about, actually, is that there's an awful lot more being outdoors potential in it. This isn't a curriculum where you will be able to do your plants once in year three and never again no more cress. This is about children getting outdoors and really engaging with the outdoors in a sustained way, building up their knowledge as they go through from year one to year six of the world around them and how it changes over time. And I think that's a real opportunity for us. Assessment of the new curriculum is quite different from what we've grown to know and use over the last 10, 15 years. The essential difference is there's no levels anymore. This isn't a curriculum where we expect some children to get so far and others to go a bit further. This is a mastery curriculum where all children are expected to know and apply and understand all of the stuff that is prescribed for each um, year group or at working scientifically it's prescribed over two years. And that is I think really exciting because it, we're not going to be putting levels or artificial barriers on children. We're not going to be saying, oh, well, these will only get this far. We're going to say they're all going to get it. And actually, what it is they're going to get is quite good. You know, there's good stuff in there. It's demanding, it's challenging, it's exciting. And so that is the key difference. No longer will we be saying, these are my level threes. We'll be saying, all of the children have achieved this. And that's what the expectation is that we need to enable all children to access and achieve the programme of study for, uh, that's been prescribed for them. Um, and schools are actually free to use their own approach to monitor that because they will need to be able to check within a school whether children are meeting the expectations, whether they are covering the curriculum, whether they're achieving it. And schools have been given a carte blanche actually to find their own way to do that and to record it and Ofsted will use whatever assessment information the school provides. So that offers an enormous amount of opportunities, it's also slightly daunting when before we've always had very sort of prescribed ways of being able to judge children's progress. So this I think takes us back, it puts a lot of, um, it means teachers' professional judgement becomes key 
it becomes important that we're actually have a, have a clear understanding of what it looks like for a child to understand that, how they will represent that, may represent understanding or express it and be able to know when that happens. And that's a really, I think, a really good opportunity because it takes us away from saying, did they do this on a particular day in this format? It gives us the chance to look over time at a, at a variety of children's work, be it written work, drawings, oral work, how they, how they manipulate equipment, how they set up investigations, how they um, analyse data. So it offers enormous amounts of potential. The sample sats are still going to carry on as a way of monitoring standards across the, across the whole of England. And they will be slightly different from, uh, from previously. They, instead of a, a whole class in the school being selected, it will be a group of children. This is matrix sampling, so we'll have a few fewer children, more schools being sampled overall, in the same way as now, in that the results will not be reported back to the school. There's no um, or, or, or to individual children. This is very much looking across the whole. And the papers, instead of looking like an old SAT paper, which was included biology, physics, chemistry and, and science inquiry and some science inquiry separately. These are going to be a biology paper, a physics paper, a chemistry paper and they are, the science inquiry is, or the working scientifically is woven through it. There's no standalone working scientifically questions. And each child will have a different set of tests as far as that can be to have a really full idea. And um, they'll happen every two years. Okay, to, in order to prepare for the new curriculum, teachers need to read it. I and mean, there's an awful lot of rumours go around about new curriculum and sort of mess, mixed messages. So I would say read it carefully. It's not that long. Um, and the first thing you'll notice is that things have moved around a bit. So review your scheme of work. What's in it already that you do? What isn't in it? So that's, a, that's an initial action. Some things, th this curriculum is identified year by year. So some things will be in different year groups. You could decide to keep with what you do already but I wouldn't advocate that because you'll end up missing things and also the progression will not be as well managed as it has been in the curriculum. So you need to be looking at your existing scheme of work and seeing where any gaps are and where you need to move things around. You need to be ready for the changes to assessment. You are going to have to be thinking about this and thinking how are we going to be able to judge and monitor children's progress across this new programme of study and be able to demonstrate that to somebody else. And so I think there's a key issue about developing teachers' confidence in assessment of science, in teacher assessment of science, and that will be linked to developing teachers' confidence in some of the areas that they're less familiar with, the new bits of science that have come into this.